AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. GM says net to the Russians. Hybrids and EVs face a critical metal shortage. BMW unveils a dramatic new concept car and we test drive two diesels. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Monday, August 31st, 2009, and now the latest auto news. Reports out of Germany say that General Motors does not want the Russians involved in any takeover of Opel. The AFP reports that an article in German magazine, Der Spiegel, claims the U.S. government, which now owns 60% of GM, does not want the Russians involved. But the German government denies these reports. Let me give you some background on what's really going on. Earlier this year, GM's vice president of purchasing, Bo Anderson, left GM to become the chairman and CEO of the Russian automaker, Gaz. GM is not happy that Anderson left the company and even more upset that he went with Gaz, which is tied in with the Russian investment bank, Sparabank, which is Magna's partner to buy Opel. GM knows that Bo Anderson is a pretty smart guy and could do a lot of damage if he got technology from GM and Opel. So it's not only for strategic reasons GM does not want Gaz to get Opel, it's personal. A report from Reuters says there could be a shortage of rare earth metals that are needed to make hybrid cars. It quotes one strategic metals expert calling the Toyota Prius the biggest user of rare earth metals of any object in the world. These metals include neodymium, which is needed to make the powerful magnets used for electric motors and hybrids, and lanthanum, which is needed to make hybrid batteries. China, which is the largest producer of rare earth metals, is beginning to limit exports so its home industries can have access to them. New mines are being opened in California and Canada, but experts say demand will soon exceed supply. And maybe billionaire investor Warren Buffett saw these reports because word out of China is that he wants to acquire more of BYD, the Chinese company that makes lithium batteries and electric cars. Gasgu reports that BYD is deciding whether it should sell him more of the company. Buffett bought a 10% stake in BYD last year for $230 million and has already made a billion dollar profit on that investment. Another automaker has unveiled a new concept car ahead of the Frankfurt Motor Show. This time, BMW spilled the beans. The Vision Efficient Dynamics is a plug-in hybrid that aims to combine M-car performance with super low emissions. It has a 98-cell lithium polymer battery pack that delivers an electric-only range of 50 kilometers, about 31 miles. It features a three-cylinder diesel engine and two electric motors, that deliver a combined 356 horsepower and a walloping 590 pound-feet of torque. The company says it will sprint from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.8 seconds with fuel consumption of about 3.8 liters per 100 kilometers. That's about 62 miles per gallon. It's great to see BMW was able to combine performance and efficiency like this. But man, the styling, especially the back end. Well, we can't blame Chris Bangle for this one. Ford finally released details on its brand new heavy duty diesel engine. Codenamed Scorpion, the 6.7 liter power stroke is an in-house design that will replace the company's current Navistar built engine. Like other modern diesel, it features a long list of advanced technologies like piezoelectric fuel injectors and a compacted graphite iron or CGI block that's twice as strong as regular cast iron. It also has twin turbochargers, which are mounted in the valley of the V, so they take up less space. They're also of a new design. Essentially two in one, they share the same housing and shaft. Ford says this layout helps cut lag without sacrificing boost pressure. The Power Stroke engine should be fully compatible with blended B20 fuel. Look for it to debut on Ford's 2011 Super Duty pickup. And speaking of diesels, coming up next, we take a look at a couple of diesel powered cars we just had in the Auto Line garage.
Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. Diesels have a tough sell in the U.S. market. Most of the American public doesn't think about diesels when it comes to fuel economy. They think about hybrids. But we're starting to see more choices when it comes to diesel-powered cars, and I just had a chance to drive two of them. To drive a hybrid or a diesel? Aye, that is the question. Whether tis nobler to drive on the auto cycle or with battery assist. I've just had a chance to test drive two turbo diesels that bracket both ends of the market. The first, of course, the people's car, the Volkswagen Jetta TDI. And then at the premium performance end, the BMW 335D. Let's go for a test drive that shows the advantages and disadvantages of a diesel compared to a hybrid. And let's start with the Jetta TDI. So does the Jetta TDI get as good a fuel economy as the Honda Inside or the Toyota Prius? No, it doesn't. We're getting about a combined 38 miles per gallon after having driven this car for about a week, both highway and city. So that's probably indicative of what it'll get. That's not as high as what the Insight will give you in the low 40s or the Prius will give you in the 50s. But those cars might be fun to drive when you're trying to eke out the, the best fuel economy possible. But when you punch it, they don't do anything. And when you really get into it, this car moves. The torque just keeps on flowing. So does the BMW 335 diesel get the same kind of fuel economy that, say, a Lexus Hybrid HS 258 gets? Yeah. It gets about the same kind of fuel economy, but the best thing about this car is when you punch it, it really gets it. So which is it, hybrid or diesel? I gotta tell you, the environmentalist in me loves the hybrids, but the enthusiast in me says, go with the diesel. Performance trumps fuel economy because the fuel economy of these cars is actually pretty good. And that'll do it for today's top automotive news. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.